Okay, good morning, everybody, and thank you very much for joining us on this first of May, a gorgeous sunny day. Hopefully, we won't keep you out of the sunshine if you do get an opportunity to go into it. Um, we are going to be aiming to finish today in 45 minutes, uh, so we're going to be trying to keep ourselves on schedule. This is our first webinar, so please do bear with us if we have any technical difficulties. I first see, sorry, I should introduce myself. My name is James Byrne. I work with Columbia Ireland, and I'm the chair of the Retail Excellence E-Commerce Committee. And I would like to thank all the members of our committee for all their work today in organizing today's webinar, to thank all of our panelists, and in particular, to thank the team in Retail Excellence for the great work that they've been doing on our behalf over the last number of weeks. So with that, I will introduce you to David Fitzsimons, the CEO of Retail Excellence, who's going to give us a quick introduction to our panelists. Thank you, David. Good morning, James. Good morning, everyone. I think we've over 200 companies on the, on the call, so, um, yeah, so uh, thanks. Good morning. So first to James Byrne, Glombia and his committee, our e-commerce committee. Thanks, guys, for all the work you're doing. Um, so good morning, everyone. It's um, it's very unusual to see so many members in this way. We, we really kind of miss you all and look forward to seeing you all in person soon. So today we have um, a, a great lineup. I suppose first by way of an introduction, um, and I'm see, I see the comments about my beard. Yes, I'm, I'm growing a lovely beard. I'm trying to get a job in Studio 49 and yet have to have a beard to work there. So, uh, yeah, we're seeing some monumental changes in how we shop, obviously. Um, and if you read the Sunday Business Post this Sunday, there's a good feature in terms of the new normal. So uh, in the future, we're going to see a lot more homeworking, which obviously will be potentially great free commerce um, as people don't get to see their their stores in the high streets as frequently as they normally did and thus will shop with them online and and secondly obviously the hobby the biggest hobby in the world is, is shopping and it's a very tactile and engaging experiential social uh, thing as you you know browse handbags or fashion or whatnot and for the short term that's obviously changed so Again, while high street retail can't offer that tactile and, and great hobby and experience, obviously on, online will grow. So, um, yeah. So, look, we've got some great speakers today. Um, one, one small point, when you come off this call, um, you'll have an email from me asking um, everyone potentially to, to send a brief email to their local TDs and politicians um, to try and implement our five-point plan around rates, rent, Reemployment measures. Um, we the pro program for government is this week um, and next week being designed, and we, we desperately need to obviously urge our political leaders, our government, to do all they can for for retail. So if you could respond to that, that would be wonderful. So look on to the agenda. Um, so you can see on your screen there. For, for, firstly, we have Stephen Hughes from Enterprise Ireland talking us through the new COVID online scheme. So uh, Stephen. Before I hand over to you, I want to say thank you to you and your team. You're brilliant. Every one of our members who have previously applied and become EI clients really, really love the experience, love the support. You guys are doing such a great job, so thank you. We then have Stephen Fitzgerald from Golden Discs, who was the best boy in class in phase one applications. His application was um, sensational. It was the, 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 the best. So, Stephen, thank you for sharing um, with all of our fellow members, uh, your expertise in terms of how we can draw down the money and be successful. And finally, Porik from the Local Enterprise Office here in Clare. Porik, thanks so much to you for participating on the call and, and sharing all the, the, the great work that you guys do across the country. And, and you guys are, are really brilliant. So to Stephen, Stephen and, and Porik, um, thank you, because I know you're all desperate to assist and help businesses during a concerning and, and, and difficult time. And I really want to thank you. So look, Let's go. So firstly, we've got Mr. Stephen Hughes, who's going to talk to us about Enterprise Ireland and, and the new round of funding. So Stephen, thank you so much. And, and off, off we go. Thank you. So t thank you, David. Um, are you hearing me OK? Yeah. OK, so thank you, David. Um, um, Stephen Hughes, as, as David said, I head up the consumer retail team, team in Enterprise Ireland. I'm just going to give you a short, high level introduction to the scheme here today. We have a much more detailed webinar and documentation with all of the application forms on our own website. And you can access that through um, enterprise-ireland.com slash retail. Um, 
Unfortunately today, because the scheme is now open, it's like a public tendering process. I cannot, um, okay. I cannot participate in the question and answers. Um, however, on our website, there is a guidance document of six pages that has dealt with all of the questions that we've had to date. And I think most questions that have arisen have been dealt with. So you can you can certainly um, answer or get the answers there, or you can drop us an email directly and we will answer it, but we will answer it not to yourself directly, but put it up on the guidance document. Okay, James. Thank you. Okay, so this is the third call. And um, the first call we had was in late 2018 and then one in 2019. We've learned an awful lot um, about the call and how we could make it much more streamlined for the retail, um, for the retail applicant. Um, and we have brought all of that knowledge to this call. Um, as it is a competitive call, it's unlikely we will be able to fund every applicant. So it's essential that everybody makes as good an application as they can. I mean, I know, as David said, going forward, retailing will change dramatically and the online presence and an omnipresence will be the future for retail. Um, I, I must say, uh, as well as um, Stephen Fitzgerald's application, we've got some other fantastic applications from, from a, a lot of relatively small um, and regionally based retailers. So we're expecting to get a similar level of, of high quality applications in, in this call as well. Okay, James. So there are some significant adjustments or improvements, if you like, um, on this scheme. The first one, which is which is which is actually is unprecedented, is a grant rate of eighty percent. It's the highest ever grant rate that Enterprise Ireland have been allowed to give for such a large amount of money. We've been able to give it for smaller amounts, but certainly not at this scale. So it's unprecedented in that regard. It's open now to food retailers, which the previous two schemes were not, and are, are a was, but in a very difficult um, application process, but now all food retailers can apply. And, and most importantly, um, we've reduced the waiting for internationalization um, in the scoring mechanism. We still have to retain that in there, but we've reduced it to such a way, to such a level that it should not impact on anybody making a very strong and positive application. Then three other key points that I would like to um, um, just raise is it, the scheme is open to only Irish owned retailers with 10 or more employees. Anybody who has less than 10 um, should be looking towards the Leo scheme. And I know that um, Porik will be talking about that later on. You must have some form of existing online presence. So that whether that's a website or you're active in social media through um, Facebook or through Instagram, that is, a, that is a requirement. And then lastly, you must derive the majority of your revenue currently through your high street outlet or outlets. Okay, James. So here we've listed out the key areas to cover. I'm not going to go through all of them in detail because they are on the website, but, but Remember again, and I've said it already, and I'll say it again, this is a competitive call, okay? So it's important to do a good, complete, and clear document. I mean, one of the things that you need to bear in mind is that people will be reading these documents and won't know your business as well as you do. So if you put in too much documentation, it just makes it very difficult to evaluate exactly what the message is. So what I would say to you that good does not mean volume or more. Good means clear. Um, um, on our website, the weightings and scoring is showing. Okay, so you'll need to strongly consider the various, there's four categories. You just need to cons consider very strongly the four different um, categories as you're making that application. Um, okay, James. So there are three main areas of eligible cost, but the one that I'd like to highlight is the, the salary cost of a senior project champion. We know that if this is going to really work in companies that it needs to have buy-in at the highest level in the organization. And that's why we're supporting a project champion in company. We will cover up to 200 euros a day to a maximum of 125 days. So it's a very, generous level of support. And indeed that can form part of the company's um, commitment to the overall application. 
One thing that I should mention here as well, we talk about the external service provider and there's a listing of those on our website, but you don't have to stick with the external provider in the app. If you make an application and you nominate an external provider, you do not have to stick with that um, with that company or that organization if you find someone who you think is more relevant to you after you've made the application. All you need to do is to um, to notify us of that change and we can make the adjustment on the documentation. And then finally, just in terms of the, 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 the claims process, um, the final claim date will be one year after the letter of offer which will be issued to you and you can make that claim in, 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 two, in two tranches. Okay, James. So the ineligible pots are the ones that you need to really think about, okay? What we can't um, fund is um, upgrades to existing channels that would have happened anyway. Um, we cannot fund the, or support um, the off-the-shelf software or hardware packages. Um, we cannot fund um, the pay-per-click advertising campaigns on Google, Facebook, etc. okay? And one thing that's absolutely a no-no is retrospection. Uh, you, we cannot fund any costs that are that have been incurred before the uh, the the application date of the of your of of your of your request. Okay, James. So I just want to spend a, a couple of minutes on this. The sort of the learning from previous calls. Firstly, late applications. Um, the close time is is three o'clock on the twenty seventh of May. Okay, um, and if it's not in before then, um, your application cannot be considered. So you really need to look at that and do not wait till the till the eleventh hour to put in your application. Also, to remember, for an application to be successful, you need to have both your application in and the statutory accounts in as well. So when you make your application, you'll get a bounce back email saying, please submit your statutory accounts. So they need to be in as well before the three o'clock deadline on the 27th of May. If, 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 for example, you don't meet the qualifying criteria, you will be automatically rejected. And I know that seems harsh, and I know people say, well, the scheme doesn't fund everybody. Unfortunately, the scheme has a terms of reference, and in order for us to, be, to, to get the funding, we had to give some specific terms of reference, and we need to stick by those. Um, all sections of the form do need to be filled out. Um, often in the previous um, um, applications, people underestimated their costs and then, made, then came looking for supplementary supports. We can't give supplementary support. So when you're putting in um, your, your application, we would encourage you to estimate, uh, overestimate costs uh, because at least you're covered then, okay? And you can't get retrospection, but you, once you have it in from the outset, it is covered. Uh, again, one area where a lot of companies didn't do in the first applications is uh, they did not put in a, an internal champion um, cost. And this is really one that everybody should be doing from the outset and indeed you should look to max out on that but it needs to be a senior person. Um, the ineligible costs as I mentioned this before rules out the sort of the Google Facebook ads and if you put them in and that comes up to your maximum um, um, spend we'll rule it out unfortunately and then you won't be able to draw down so don't put in things that that come in under the ineligible cost rule otherwise we'll rule it out and you won't be able to get full funding. Um, and then look at the, the last thing I would say, I won't go through the, the rest of it, but the last thing I would say is look, the scheme is, and while you might think it's rigid, in our world, it's as flexible as we are able to make it, okay? And I hope that it provides a good level of support to as many retailers as possible. Um, James, you might just flick to my last slide. I just want to say, as I said, um, there are, two, there are two links here, and I presume James will be sharing the, the, the slides with everybody. There's, there's a click through to our own website and the retail page, okay? And all of the information is there. And then if you want to send in a, 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 a query, you can send it to the email address that is here, and we will respond to that on the guidance document. But unfortunately, we cannot write back to you directly. Okay, so that's me finished, James. Thank you very much, Stephen. Much, appreci much appreciated. As Stephen mentioned, he can't answer any questions during the Q&A, but we would encourage everyone to please do submit any questions through the Q&A panel. We will gather those questions together, and if they're not ones that have already been answered in the information resources that Stephen has mentioned, uh, we will ask um, 
Enterprise Ireland to provide answers for those and update that information. There's also a longer webinar from Enterprise Ireland on the scheme uh, for anyone that's interested and that's on the Enterprise Ireland page also. So with that, um, as um, David mentioned, Stephen Fitzgerald was top of the class for his application last time around. So I think we already want to know why that is. So I will hand over to Stephen Fitzgerald, who is the CEO of Golden Discs. Thank you, James, and good morning, everyone. Um, I'm going to try and avoid all the cliches, but suffice to say, we're in extraordinary times right now. And uh, who knows what awaits us on the other side of all of this. Uh, but one thing is for sure that e-commerce uh, will be at the forefront of every retailer's strategy. Um, you might have seen Amazon's Q1 figures announced yesterday. They're doing $33 million every hour of the day for the first quarter of the year. So be under no illusions. Uh, if you're not yet online, if you're tinkering around with a non-transactional website, I would strongly advocate that you get involved as soon as possible. Uh, the barriers to entry are much lower now. The software is easier. The costs have come down. Integration is easier. Uh, use the Enterprise Ireland grant as a springboard uh, into action or momentum if you're already established uh, to seriously up your game. The application that I'm referencing is obviously the Brexit online scheme from late 2018. The criteria is broadly the same as the COVID-19, but the scoring is different. So I'm not going to get into the specific answers from the previous case in case I confuse people. Um, and just to say as well that EI outside of the grant have been a, a great assistance to us. Um, they've done introductions to their UK and US offices who've also helped put us in touch with marketing and media companies that have been hugely beneficial. Uh, trade organizations like the North American Celtic Trading Association, they've done introductions there as well. They hosted a one day workshop for successful applicants uh, with Colin Lewis uh, last year at their office, which we found hugely beneficial um, to frame the project and to create an action plan. So there's a lot more to this than uh, obviously just the grant funding, which is, which is very significant. So I'm assuming everybody on the call today is going to fall into one of two cohorts. Um, perhaps being online means you have a Facebook page. Um, and James, you can move on the slide there. For others, maybe you have a multi-million euro business already established. And uh, so apologies if I'm, if I'm preaching to the converted with some of this. Um, but you know, some retailers have delayed getting into this space. Uh, perhaps it's because they've been unsure of their strategy or the costs have been too high or they, they've been worried that they haven't had resources. Um, really, it, it, it's from now on, you just have to get involved. I, I don't think it's, a, it's an option anymore. There's no time to waste. So I would just start out by saying, do some research, you know, do a basic SWOT analysis on your business, find out what your strengths are, find out where the opportunities lie, uh, do a pestle analysis. If you don't know what either of those things are, just Google them. They're very straightforward, just, just business models for trying to have a look at the overall environment, what it looks like, and what's your place in it. Uh, decide whether you're looking at the domestic market or whether you want to go further afield. Are you looking at UK, US, EU, or rest of world? And sketch it out. You know, it, it, it can be daunting, but really just put a pen to paper or, or download a, a mind map. Again, lots of free software online. Really helpful to just get your thoughts out on paper and work out what the best way forward is. And finally, talk to people. Talk to uh, consultants. Talk to as many of them as you can. Talk to other retailers. Talk to the guys in REI. Uh, you know, there's a lot of great Irish websites out there. And um, if people have been successful, they tend to like to talk about it. So reach out to other retailers and, and just have those conversations. The other cohort are, are more than likely um, seasoned veterans who are already well established and could have uh, multi-million euro turnover businesses already. So for you, it, it's going to be about next steps. So things to consider would be acquiring new customers in the digital marketing space, search engine marketing and optimization, email, social media. It could be partnerships. It could be marketplaces, Amazon and eBay. Maybe it's affiliate programs. Um, if it's going to be expansion or diversification, are you looking to grow into new international markets? Or is this more about new product lines, diversifying into new areas, or perhaps services, adding value in that way? Um, customer retention. 
can you improve on the customer service? Is that going to be your, your focus or personalization? Big buzzword over the last year, subscription services. Everybody this seems to be growing all of the time. Uh, loyalty, big debates around loyalty at the moment, whether, whether it's relevant or not, but for some it most definitely is. Uh, the value chain, is there an opportunity to vertically integrate up and down the value chain? Perhaps there's something that a supplier of yours is doing that maybe you could replicate, add value, perhaps even do it better. Uh, and B2B, again, thinking outside the box here, is there, are there other businesses that you can work with, um, perhaps even competitors? Um, is there a product database or a platform or know-how that could be shared and, of course, monetized? I think the important thing is clarity of purpose. So before you put pen to paper, um, have done the, the research and really know what it is, what direction you want to head off in, or, or it can get very confusing very quickly. So lots of things to consider. And if you're for a new or existing uh, uh, entrance to the market, and it can be very bewildering, um, you know, you don't need to do all of these things at the very start, but you definitely need to consider everything. I mean, your product, what is the product and what's its place? Y your pricing strategy. If Amazon is going to be 30% cheaper than you and they can deliver it faster and you don't have any additional ad val, I would be seriously thinking about whether, there, whether there's a play there for you. Uh, the platform that you're going to use. We're using Shopify. We found it fantastic. Very, very strong advocates for that. If you're a larger enterprise organization, maybe maybe that wouldn't be suitable. Your payment providers, your fulfillment. Are you going to warehouse or are you going to run it from one of your stores? Obviously, a lot of cost involved in, in warehousing. Your shipping partners. And obviously, if you're going international, um, what's, what's required to resource that? Your multi-channel strategy, your marketing and budgets, SEM, SEO, most of the traffic coming to our site at the moment is coming from search. So this is absolutely critical. Uh, your loyalty program, again, online loyalty program, does it integrate well with your, with your physical retail loyalty program? Affiliate programs, great for, for driving additional incremental revenue, but they will eat your margin. Social media uh, at this stage, probably looking at outsourcing that. Your customer service piece, the team, absolutely essential that you have at least one person in the organization who's going to drive this forward. There's a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of different consultants. And for the owner operator to take this on board, I would think is probably foolhardy. Um, so just to say, to focus on what's important and focus on what's necessary for your plan and, and, and forget the rest for now. So we launched our domestic, our .ie site in late 2017. We launched it on the Shopify platform. Uh, it has about 15,000 lines of product across 10 product categories and it links in with our uh, internal pause system and we run our fulfillment from our largest store. We, we budgeted that in our first year it would be in the bottom three turnover stores within the chain. In year two we wanted it midstream and by year three we wanted it in the top three. Uh, this year is year three and um, it, it looks like it's going to be our, our, our highest turnover store. Um, without a doubt, it'll be our number one store this year. So we were looking to see how could we expand into other territories. Um, and first we started looking at UK and Europe, but obviously we're going up against Amazon. Arguably we're selling an FMCG product, so it really just comes down to price. And we weren't going to be able to compete on price and we probably weren't going to be able to compete on, on speed of delivery either. So then we looked at, could we diversify into new product lines? And we have done this. We've put in books and t-shirts and merchandise and apparel. We're doing turntables, we're doing headphones, we're doing speakers. But there's only so far that, you could, that your brand can stretch if you're going to maintain credibility. If you're selling shoes, it's gonna be very difficult for you to start selling handbags. Um, so we decided, you know, could we do something in the digital space? Every, everything is going streaming. Could we look into that, into that area? The costs are huge. The competition is fierce. Uh, Spotify have been in that space for 13 years. They have 100 million subscribers and they've only just turned a profit for the first time now. So it's, it's a red sea. It, it's just too difficult. So we decided to focus on niche areas of the business, but lift them out into standalone sites and uh, target international markets. So we launched two projects. The first was uh, an Irish platform for Irish 
traditional and folk, but also contemporary artists and musicians in groups. Um, this is a standalone site. We put a lot of deliberation into the name and in the end, we just kept the Golden Disc brand and we just, we just bought the .com domain. Uh, this is primarily for search purposes. Um, the competition wasn't great. There's a lot of um, websites out there selling Irish product, but we didn't think any of them were very good. Amazon also not very good. And the consumer was not very price sensitive. If you're living in Boston and you want the new Clanad album, whether it's $13 or $16, it, it doesn't really bother you. It, it's really just a case of whether you can get it or not. Similarly, we launched a, a vinyl uh, site for our vinyl customer finding product in our, in our .ie site. We thought it's diluted with a lot of box sets and Disney products. So let's strip out the category. Let's have a standalone specialist site for the discerning vinyl enthusiast or the aficionado. So this is just vinyl product uh, and turntables and headphones. I think we have about 4,000 lines of product. And we're going to build on this with specific content that's targeted at, at, at that consumer, like album reviews, blogs, and hopefully later uh, artist interviews. So the target market for this site is more UK and into Northern Europe, Holland and Germany in particular. So we have now two specialized sites that are targeting new markets, but using the same structures, the same leveraging and all of the original resources, platforms and fulfillment. So as far as the project development plan for the grant, we broke it into three phases. The first was to scope and research the market for these two sites. The second was to design, build and test. And then the third was to market and promote. Uh, we were about to start that process uh, in February when obviously the world has turned. So everything has been on hold. The company is working on limited resources at the moment and all of the focus has been on the .ie where we're seeing significant growth over the last couple of months for obvious reasons. Um, we, we are going to launch the marketing campaign for the .com into North America in May. And I think we're going to leave the final aid until after that. Doing two at the same time is um, incredibly difficult. So on the application form itself, just a few practical tips. Um, the, the project title, I would suggest you leave this to the end. As you work through the process, you're, you might find that you end up in a different place to, to when you originally started out and probably easier to write this at, at the end when you've already done it. The factual information about your company, um, the company accounts, um, you know, answering the right questions. This is really easy stuff. So, um, you know, really no excuses for getting this wrong. Similarly, do you qualify in the first place? There's no point in going into all of this work and putting in all of this effort uh, and then finding out you don't qualify. It'll be a complete waste of your time. Um, read the question. So think back to your days in college or at school um, when you're doing an exam or assignment and try and understand what it is that the reader is looking for. Understand where the scoring is uh, there's no point in writing a novella about your business if you can't demonstrate how it's going to impact turnover and, and impact your, your future outcomes. Um, EI are looking for innovative ideas that will yield results. So just keep coming back to that. The commercial rationale, it needs to be convincing, but equally it needs to be credible and it needs to be realistic, it needs to be achievable. So can you support this with some desktop research? Can you demonstrate that there is a demand there? Uh, clarity of the plan and equally how this is going to correspond to the expenditure. They, they need to match up. Um, striking the right tone. Um, I don't think they're looking for detailed schematics or process flow charts or that level of detail, but equally it can't be a half-baked idea on the back of an envelope that you thought of over a bottle of wine. Uh, it, it needs detail, it needs to be thought through. Keep it simple. You know, if you, you will get bogged down with this uh, if it's overly complicated and you, and you will lose your way with it. So just keep coming back to the, the basic thing that you're trying to achieve. What does success look like? I think it's very important to draw a picture of how the project will transform the business, your sales contribution, the turnover, your improved market share, the new markets that you're going to be selling in, new jobs, etc. You're not expected to know everything. Um, you, know, you, you don't have crystal ball and it's gonna be very difficult to say, we're gonna do exactly this, we're gonna spend exactly this and we're gonna get exactly this outcome. 
as you work through the process, things change and you might during the process realize that actually one strategy might not work and you want to pull back from that. We were even able to reallocate funding during the process and EI were very flexible with that, provided it's, it's remaining in the same area. So I would say there's never been a more appropriate or opportune time to pivot your business. In fact, I think it's going to be essential. So uh, I'm more than happy to get on a call with anyone if anyone uh, has any questions or wants more detail or equally do a, do a Zoom call with your team is absolutely no problem. Stephen, thank you very much. Thank you very much for sharing your story. That's been fascinating. I would just remind everybody again, Stephen will be joining us for a Q&A panel and he'll be able to answer any questions that we have time for relating to his own application. If there's questions relating more broadly to the EI scheme, we'll be sending those on to Enterprise Ireland, who, as we explained, can't join the panel today. So if you have any questions, please, about any topic, not just the EI application, you can ask them in the, in the chat box, in the Q&A box. Uh, we will be bringing those to our panelists at the end of the webinar. So with that, I would like to thank Stephen again and introduce Porik McElwee uh, from Leo in County Clare, who's going to be taking us through the Leo supports that are available for online retailers. Morning, everybody. Uh, thanks for facilitating me just to give you an update on what supports are available through the uh, local enterprise office. Um, if you just move to the next slide there. Um, you can go and pass that one. I think people know I am. Just to be aware, there is 31 local enterprise offices uh, around the country. So it depends where you're located. You deal with the local enterprise office in your respective county. So get in touch with them. Just note the email or sorry, the web address at the bottom left, localenterprise.ie forward slash response. That is probably the first protocol which you can go in and check all the supports that are available through the local enterprise offices. James, move on. And within that too, it's just a summary two page brochure, which gives you uh, just a synopsis of the supports that are there. So you can again, download that from that website. Thanks James. These are very, two very simple, but very effective responses. Um, and you should avail of them where you can. We will provide free mentoring support. So in the context of maybe your website development or what you want to look at, uh, all the local enterprise offices would have a panel of mentors that would be able to maybe give you, act as a sounding board or give you some pointers what you need to consider. So please avail of that. And then we're doing quite a substantial amount of online training, a lot of it around digital marketing. Um, what's interesting on that, every time we put up new courses, uh, particularly in Clare, they sell out very, very quickly. So we're constantly trying to keep up with demand. Very important actually for your employees to participate in that because our experience is, particularly when you move to an online model, you have to make sure that your employees, your staff are able to interact and have an appreciation of what needs to happen. Thanks, James. Uh, we continue on, just want to alert you to the business continuity voucher. Um, this is really a more, it's a step up from mentoring support, but this is where you might need uh, more in-depth consultancy. It's a fund up to two and a half thousand for businesses employing up to 50. And really what it's around is around preparing a financial plan, preparing the digital plan or exploring HR practices. It's quite wide. The, um, the uses can be put to, but they're probably the three key ones we're seeing, particularly now it started out financial in the early days of this, but in the last week or so, we've seen that very much move towards the digital marketing space. So if you've not already applied for that support, it is worth uh, considering. Just watch the closing date for that support is coming up fast. I think it's the 15th of May. Thanks, James. Uh, just to mention, um, for those of you that may need a bit of uh, debt finance, there are supports there through Microfinance Ireland. Uh, I know these challenging times, taking on more debt is not attractive, but if you require liquidity, at least it is an option. Just be aware the first six months are interest free and there's also no repayments for the six months. Applications to ourselves are at a reduced rate of 4.5%. Okay. 
And on to the main topic, really, the trading online voucher, uh, which is really today's topic. If you move, James, to the next slide. Um, and uh, over the last week, in response to the COVID situation, the scheme has been enhanced. It still remains at 2,500 max grant. However, the level of funding has gone from 50% up to 90%, which is quite significant. And if you're a business that availed of the trading online voucher before, you are eligible to get a second voucher. So if you move on, James, to that. I just want to, there are the eligibility criteria. Uh, it must be an online trading platform. So one of the key things here, not a brochure website. There has to be an ability for a customer to interact through your website. This is aimed at retailers or any business with 10 or less employees, turnover less than 2 million and you must be trading at least six months. Thanks, James. Okay, I just want to mention this because this is some of the issues that we see coming up. Um, we do require three quotes for the work that needs to be undertaken, and that, that's really just a sense check that it is value for money. Uh, we do require, particularly for people that are new to getting online, that they participate in an information session uh, and really, actually, Stephen touched on it. It's trying to give you a, a sense of guidance before you go down a path that maybe you find you're halfway down and you know what, I took the wrong option there. And just be aware, it's a retrospective grant, so you do have to pay it from your own cash flow and claim it back then through ourselves. We will try and do that as quickly as possible because we are aware of uh, the significant cash flow pressure people are under. Okay, James? So I, what I'd ask you, there is lots of criteria and what we find is do not make an application without talking to your local enterprise office first because that will eliminate um, a lot of frustration. Sometimes we get in applications where people haven't talked to us and we're over and back and everybody gets frustrated with that. Also to be aware that we are experiencing a non-precedented demand for the trading online voucher. So the volume of applications has uh, just exploded in the last couple of days. We will try and get to everybody as quickly as we can, but just be a little bit patient with us. So uh, I will be on the Q&A later on. I can take any questions, but I would encourage you, probably the more specific questions, it's appropriate to talk to your local enterprise office. Thank you. Auric, thank you very much for that. Uh, really appreciate your time today. And with that, we will be moving on to our Q&A panel and Auric will be taking part in that as well. So again, I know I'm a broken record on this one. Enterprise Ireland are unable to join the panel or answer any questions live. Stephen Fitzgerald may be able to answer some questions on uh, the Enterprise Ireland grant, but other than that, we would refer you back to the website or ask you to ask your questions in the chat box, the Q&A box or you can email questions to antonet at retailexcellence.ie and we'll try and pick those up in our next webinar, which will be next Wednesday at 11 a.m. So apologies in advance if we can't get to all the questions today. And with that, I will open up and introduce our panel. We have Michal Ogrugon from AIB, Maeve Dwyer from DPD, Stephen Fitzgerald from Golden Disc, Jerk Johan from Studio 49, who has set up our webinar today and a special thanks to Jer, Connor Cochran from Social Media Elite and Viral Media, and Parik, who we've just heard from, from, from Leo. So I'll open up to the panelists. And I guess I'll open with a question first to our panelists, if there's any burning issues arising out of our presentations today that you would like to pick up initially. And after that, we will pick up some questions from our chat box. So, to our Q&A panelists, if there's any of you want to jump in with a question, if not, I will, I will pick some questions out now and start to ask them. We did have some questions about if the slides will be available afterwards, and they will. So a recording of the webinar will be available. All of the slides presented today will be available. And if there's any other information provided by the speakers, we'll make those available also. So there's just uh, one question that gets asked quite a bit is, um, whether or not um, development costs can be covered um, by the grant. Um, the, the answer is not 100% clear. So I, I definitely uh, would hope um, to seek further clarification. 
both uh, the um, off-the-shelf software, um, you can't pay for off-the-shelf software. So you can't uh, get a website from Shopify and pay for your Shopify costs that way. And I would imagine you can't pay for theming or standard, let's say standard e-commerce development, I, I would imagine. Um, but a lot of people are, talk, are asking about things like loyalty platforms, um, uh, stock integration, um, order processing, and so on. And there is an answer in the, um, uh, in the guideline that um, uh, Enterprise Ireland uh, provided about a week ago. And the answer is, um, and so the question is, could you detail further the ineligible costs? Is technical development to upgrade an existing platform covered? Will redesign and rebuild of the platform be covered? So there's a couple of questions in there. And the answer is, it may be. This depends on what you are trying to achieve and how it fits into your uh, overall business plan and your digital strategy. So um, that's a, so. There's quite a few questions coming in along those lines, um, and um, you know the answer I suppose is a little bit open for interpretation. But I guess um, if the development is uh, let's say custom development or development to integrate um, uh, things like order processing in a time like now where where your order processing is going to be really under pressure. Uh, and being able to automate certain uh, functions um, from an e-commerce point of view will allow you to remain sustainable and to keep your business open and to fulfill the requests to your customers. I would imagine you can make a case for it, um, but you would need to make a case. It's not, it's not 100% um, for certain. Okay, thanks very much, Ger, for that. I have a question here from David Fitzgerald for Stephen Fitzgerald, hopefully not a plant. Uh, it's a two-part question, Stephen. David has asked, what stage of your online development caused you the most difficulty in Golden Discs? And the second part is, what marketing channel do you find generates the highest conversion rate? Um, I seem to recall we had a lot of difficulties with integration. So I think that will, we definitely had some hurdles there because we were trying to integrate four different systems, our own uh, pause system for stock, with Shopify, uh, with another database for all of the product uh, descriptions and artwork. Uh, and there were, there were definitely a lot of challenges there. There's a lot of coding that needed to be done. On the conversion rates, um, I think it can depend on the campaign. We've had some very high conversion rates using email marketing, but um, overall I'd say probably search, organic and paid search. Super, thank you, Stephen. I have one other question, which is not a plant, but is from my brother, I think, uh, mm -hmm. which is a question for Maeve Dwyer in DPD. Uh, the question, Maeve, from Damien Byrne is, is it economically feasible to fulfill orders to the UK and other international markets from Ireland and be competitive? I would say yes. We have a lot of customers that are um, based in Ireland that are um, exporting to, to the UK and mainland Europe. Um, I would say though that most of those customers have set up their websites um, to have localized their websites um, rather than specifically promoting themselves as um, Irish based business. Although there are then others that would have would be um, specifically promoting the Irish element. It's very much dependent on the product. So yes is the answer, but I suppose it does depend on, 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 the, on the particular type of um, product. Great, thank you Maeve. And I know we discussed during the week with regards to how open couriers are for business at the moment um, when dealing with high volumes. You might speak for a DPD perspective on that for a moment. Okay, I suppose it's been an incredible um, few weeks for us um, as well as all of you. Um, we have seen um, volume growth uh, by about 50% since the, the beginning of March. And I suppose it's been amazing to see us, the, the diversification from um, some of our um, customers. Now, that, that volume growth, growth, by the way, is from our existing um, customer base. So we have, um, for the last couple of weeks, um, been going through a really, really strong recruitment drive, um, bringing in more um, drivers because it's really, it's kind of feet on the ground or, or bums in the driving seat um, that we need. Um, and um, so, yeah, it's, it's been challenging, but um, we're getting there. And it's, what's been really, really um, great has been the reaction from our customers and from their customers at the doorstep. So... Um, difficult times, challenging times, but we're getting there. 
Super, thank you, Maeve. We, we have run over slightly, but if it's okay, we might just keep going with a few more questions because there are more coming in. I have a, a short question for you, Connor, but I'm going to ask for a short answer as well in the interest of time. Uh, what is the best way to grow your social media following? Um, there's a question in from Aoife Madden, which I know you could talk all day on that. <laughs> yeah, no, I think for uh, growing your social media, I would actually say that um, not to focus on growing it and focus on who you're reaching and engaging because often pages say like, oh, I want another 10,000 followers. And with social media now, you don't get that organic reach anyway. So what is the point in growing your social media following? by twice the size or three times the size. So my tip would actually be focus on reaching the, your target audience more consistently and engaging them instead of just growing a following. Thanks very much, Connor. And Connor will be one of the speakers at our webinar next week as well. So if you're interested in social media tactics in particular at the moment during um, COVID-19, um, tune in next week as well for that. Um, You'll see a poll has just popped up there. This is a poll that Jar has set up for us. Um, we're looking for a little bit of feedback on today on what improvements we can make, um, how you found the experience today so we can improve it for the next webinars. As David said at the start, we've had um, over 200 companies represented today. So huge interest and thank you very much. I'll just have a quick scan here and see if there are any more um, um, questions there. Michal from, from AIB. You might speak for a moment just in terms of somebody getting set up for online setting um, for merchant services. Is that a big challenge, doing it for the first time? Not today. Uh, hopefully everybody can uh, see really Not today these days. We've converted an awful lot of our sales and relationship managers to listening to our customers who've been, who've been hampered by the social distancing and, and the closures so that we can help them trade at a distance. And that has meant rapidly helping them with pay by link systems, uh, virtual terminals, so that they can begin to take payment for trades that are done at a distance. And equally, anybody who's been standing up a website has been getting a, an awful lot of quick responses back to get them configured. And we're very, very keen to support our customers trading through this crisis. And e-commerce and distance selling is the means by which they do it. So. The one thing I can say is there's an awful lot of support available. Reaching out has been very, very, very productive for those that have done it so far. And if everybody who's got any questions about trying to do this or what help is there to help them to do it, call in, email in. There are lots of relationship managers there who want to answer your questions, who want to help their businesses trade uh, through this and help them through the challenges. So. It's been very active up until now, and we want to continue that. And in fact, we want to increase it uh, so every customer is speaking back to their uh, clients. And I would say that's not limited to ourselves. I know that the entire acquiring industry is doing the same. So if you're not lucky enough to be one of our customers, definitely speak to your uh, speak to your uh, respective supplier, because I know that everybody is making an effort to try and help our customers. Thanks very much, Michal. And I know you're going to be joining us next week as well to speak specifically about the pay by link, which I think is a really interesting um, strategy, particularly for members who are not selling online yet, but want to de-risk those um, over the phone payments. I have one more question has come in for, for Stephen in Golden, Di in Golden Discs. Uh, Stephen, in terms of attracting an excellent champion to drive the project, what recommendations would you have? That's from Frank Holly. Yeah, we in the in the last round, we didn't actually use an internal project champion, but I, I think it's a really good idea. And I think everyone should look at doing that this time around. Um, presumably look within the company and see if you have someone who has the skill sets. And, and if not, um, obviously hire externally. I think talk to other retailers, talk to some of the consultants. Uh, it's a small enough market and, and uh, just just find out uh, where the skill sets lie, what it is that you need and then and then who would be the right fit for that. Super, thanks very much, Stephen. And I'll just maybe ask you one final question and then we'll wrap up. Um, it might be for yourself or for Connor as well. In terms of budget allocation for online marketing, how would you advise to break this down between Google advertising and social marketing? It's coming from Mark. Um, well, from my point of view, we'd have a look at the client and kind of where their market is, um, where the customers are at. But at the moment, uh, digitally on social media, probably we're getting 30 to 40% of overall turnover coming from social media sales. Some is a lot higher than that. So obviously you would break down the budget based on that and what you can achieve. But um, at the moment, the results are pretty incredible what can be achieved on digital and search at the moment. 
Thanks very much, Connor. Folks, we, we have run over time, so we might leave it there. Just very quickly before we finish up, um, a big thank you to everybody again. Thank you to all of our panelists. Everybody has given up their time today um, on a volunteer basis. Our committee all work on a volunteer basis and Retail Excellence have been, the team there have been putting in Trojan work in very difficult circumstances, no more than yourselves. So just a big thank you to everybody. We have two more webinars in this series at the moment and we'll put on more if there's a demand. So next Wednesday at 11 a.m. we have a webinar on short-term revenue strategy. So it doesn't you don't necessarily have to start with a website. There are other strategies you can engage if you're not quite at that stage yet. We will be looking at changing customer needs in our new low contact world. And um, Connor will be taking us through on using social media to sell during COVID-19. Barry Currigan from Currigan's Butchers, who's doing some fantastic work at the moment online, is going to take us through his story. And um, AIB will be taking us through the pay by link and we will again have our panel. So if you have any questions, you can send them in to Antoinette at retailexcellence.ie. You can ask them in the, chat, in the chat here before we close. And we will be sending out the slides from today and the registration link for next week. So with that, we'll bring today's webinar to a close and thank you all very much again. Well done, James. Happy May. Thanks, David. Thank you, James. Well done, guys. <laughs>